Hello, I'm Lance Zimmerman with the Cattle Facts Closing Bell, brought to you by Zoetis. Cheaper corn prices have reduced feed costs across the livestock sector. It's a natural assumption to believe lower input costs would lead to heavier carcass weights for all livestock market classes. This would seem even truer with the better margins available in each feeding segment. However, year-to-date 2014 weight changes are relatively mixed for cattle, broilers, and hogs. Fed cattle weights are tracking nearly identical with 2013. Year-to-date steer carcass weights are at 856.1 pounds, down one-tenth of a percent compared to 2013. Most of the year-over-year -year decline has occurred in the last five weeks, where weights have averaged four pounds below 2013 levels. U.S. broiler carcass weights are currently running 1.8% higher in 2014 at 4.5 pounds per carcass. Over the last five weeks, those weights have trended mostly steady, which is not out of character during the warmer weather months. The clear outlier has been market hog weights. Barrow and gilt carcass weights currently have a year-to-date average of 212.3 pounds. That's up 4% compared to the same period last year. The most impressive gains have actually come in recent weeks, with weights up 5%. Market hog dressed weights have actually trended higher when the seasonal would suggest steady to lower carcass weights. As mentioned earlier, cheaper corn prices have likely had a role in this. Also, earlier PED virus losses have likely allowed for additional capacity, and producers have used the extra pen space to feed market hogs longer. Cattlefax expects these first half 2014 trends to continue through the rest of the year. Fed steer weights will likely end the year near steady, broiler weights will be up 1 to 2 percent, and market hog weights will likely be 3 percent higher. The overall higher carcass weight trend in the poultry and pork segments should offset some of the expected slaughter declines in cattle and hogs, leading to a U.S. per capita net meat and poultry supply that is down 1 percent from last year at around 199 pounds per person. The fed cattle market was steady to as much as $2 higher this week. The south traded cattle from $149 to mostly $150 per hundredweight, while sales in the north ranged from $148 to $150 live and $234 to $239 per hundredweight dressed. Feeder cattle values were $4 to $5 higher on the week, calf prices were $4 to $6 higher, and slaughter cows traded $1 to $2 higher. Relatively light volume and exceptionally strong summer demand continue to support prices for feed yard replacement cattle. Box beef cutout values were sharply higher this week as buyers found themselves short on product coming out of the Father's Day weekend, and corn prices ended a few cents higher as the market likely found some technical support after the sell-off in recent weeks. Thanks for watching, and remember to visit cattlefacts.com to become a member and receive the latest market news and analysis. The beef business has never been for the faint of heart. The pressures are real, the risks are high, but the opportunities have never been greater. So how do you sort through it all to decide which way to go? For more than 40 years, Cattle Facts has led the way. Become a member at www.cattlefacts.com. We're the time-proven leader in research, analysis, and information. Equipped with the industry's most powerful database, our team is impartial, objective, our vision is global, and our focus is you. Cattle Facts, the deciding factor.